Hey y'all, it's me again. Oh my god, listen, I've got a lot of free time and I just, this is just something that I wanted to do, okay? Leave me alone. So as you can tell by the title of this video, I'm gonna talk about something that's been interesting for me to say the least, especially in college. So for me growing up, I wasn't particularly open about my emotions, but I wasn't particularly closed off either. I was very happy to tell someone, hey, that's rude, stop bullying me. I got bullied a lot. And so I kind of just told people off. And I had a lot of friends who would like not talk about their emotions, but like want try and like drop hints to me and try and be like, here, take care of me. And my friendships were just incredibly toxic when I was younger. Um, I didn't go to therapy until I was about 13. And that was because um, I got suspended in school for doing something that I wasn't supposed to do. And my parents were like, maybe you should go to therapy. And I was like, you know, that's not a bad plan. <laughs> so I went to therapy and PSA, if you go to therapy, take the time to find the right therapist. I had my first therapist, I had this woman who I did not like, who I did not trust and who I, and who I did not want to talk to. And I just didn't really talk to her about my emotional issues. And so it didn't really work out for me. So I started seeing that therapist in about eighth grade and I saw her for about a year before I got into ninth grade. And then I got into ninth grade and I kind of fell into depression that was kind of based on my friends were all going through depression and I was like, well, you guys are my friends. I want to be like you. And it was also to do with, I had a close friend who died and kind of all of my childhood <laughs> bubbling back up to the surface. And so I kind of shut off with talking about my emotions, certainly to my family, um, but even to my friends, I would like not tell them how I was doing and I wouldn't really talk about any of that. My friends would all like emotion dump on me and I would try and fix them and I would desperately want to like take their problems away and like I would take them on. And it would be awful because they'd be like, I have an eating disorder and I'd be like, well, let me help you, let me fix you, let me do it for you. And through that, you know, a terrible time, I have learned that like, you can't fix other people. You really have to let them fix themselves, which is incredibly frustrating. And I know how it feels to just desperately want to fix somebody else and to just take all their pain away. And so then I started seeing a different therapist after a stint in a mental hospital in my freshman year. I was talking to that therapist and I was really able to open up and talk to her about my problems starting with like the stuff that happened when I was a little kid that still affected me and I was able to really have an open and honest line of communication with her which was incredible for me and then I saw that therapist for about two years and um, in the beginning it was like two times a week because I really needed a lot of therapy at that time and then eventually it moved to once a week and then um, towards the end of my junior year I stopped seeing her. I stopped seeing her for a couple of reasons. One, I had um, learned enough tools to be able to deal with my depression and my anxiety like on my own and really like if I have a panic attack I know how to deal with it or if I get depressed I know what to do to make myself feel better and I know how to reach out for help. And then there was also the monetary issue which my parents, being the incredibly supportive people that they are, had said, you know, don't, don't worry about the money. money. But me being the anxious person that I am, of course, worried about it. And it was a lot of money because she had stopped taking my insurance. And so it became a, a, a really big expense, which my parents, of course, being incredible, were like, you know, if you need it, please, 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 we want you to have this and we want, we want to pay for this. And I didn't really needed at the time. Um, I don't think a couple more months would have hurt, but I also think they would have made me feel really guilty and, and feel really bad. And so I think I made the right decision by um, stopping, to stopping seeing her. So to the point of this video, um, through the, the years of therapy, I was able to develop an open and honest line of communication with myself and really just be able to look at myself from an outside perspective and say, okay, what's going on? Why is this happening and how do I fix it? And um, it was just a really eye-opening experience and the way to develop that line of communication with myself for me was to open up to my family a lot about, hey, I'm feeling depressed today. And that was really, really hard because I didn't, 
I desperately didn't want to be broken to my parents and my brothers um, and I wanted to to like be the best me that I could be and be like perfect and um, you know I wasn't and I had to learn to be okay with that and then also just tell my parents hey this is what's happening there's not really anything you can do about it but saying it is gonna make me feel better and so that line of communication with my parents as well as with myself is a lot of the reason that I'm able to say to my friends when they say, hey, how are you? I'm able to actually answer and not just say, good, how are you? I'm able to say, you know, I'm really not doing that well. I have this going on and it's really frustrating. How are you doing? And it prompts a conversation about like how they're actually doing and that really contributes to not only my mental health but theirs, which is amazing. And going to college, I've seen a very wide range of emotional maturities. I've been able to see a lot of that and look at the juxtaposition <laughs> without juxtaposition. People are a lot more shy talking about their mental health if you don't talk about yours first. So if I were to say to my friend, hey, how are you? Oh, good. How are you? There's like a kind of break that's like, I don't, I don't really feel comfortable about this, but if I say to one of my friends, hey, I'm depressed, how are you? They'll say, you know, me too. And then we can talk about why and it's just kind of developing that line of communication, which is amazing. If you want to try and maybe be more comfortable talking about your emotions, the best advice I can give you is just to talk about them. And in the beginning, it'll make you and everybody you're talking to uncomfortable because you don't exactly know how to approach it. But through practice, you will not only be able to approach it in a way that doesn't make other people uncomfortable, you will also find the people who are not uncomfortable talking about their emotions. Or sometimes you'll meet the people who are and they're just weird about it and you have to like dig it out of them because you love them as a person and they're incredibly, incredibly frustrating. You know who you are. All right, so that was my video. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about or if you just wanna say, hey, how you doing? Leave a comment if you'd like, leave a like, subscribe. I don't know how to do this outro thing. I feel terribly awkward saying like, comment, like, subscribe. <laughs> because I'm like, you don't have to do any of those things. You're, you're welcome to do what you want. I'd prefer you not leave a hate comment because that would be kind of rude. But still, if you really wanted to, you could. All right, see you guys later, bye.